Okay, so I saw a lot of videos on YouTube before I bought this about both the base model and the i7. That's all the review people seem to be buying. So I wanted to make this video on the i5, which I think is a pretty good value compared to the other two in terms of performance. So this is my setups, what I've got. Um, 8 gigs RAM, i5 terabyte SSD. Cinebench for some reason says it has 3 cores, 6 threads, but that's not true. It's just 6 cores, 6 threads. I've got Power Gadget up here. I'm going to run Cinebench on it, not for the sake of the score, but for the sake of the thermals. Cinebench is one of the more taxing benchmarks. I would run um, Geekbench, but Geekbench really doesn't tax the CPU very much. So I want to run Cinebench. As you can see, it just hit 100, which is to be expected. It performs a lot better than the i7 in terms of thermals. The i7 was very, very hot. Uh, when you fire up Cinebench on the i7, it hits 100 within one second, maybe two seconds. I don't know if you can hear the fan on this now, but it's starting to spin up. Um, the cooling system actually is really impressive in these things for what it is. It's super, super tiny, and we got, we got 836. That's pretty low. Should be getting like 9. We should be getting 100 more than that, but, you know, that's fine. It's probably the way the fans regulate themselves. They sort of spin up too slow, so you get a little bit of thermal throttling in, um, like, burst workloads. So if you kept running this, the score would probably actually go up. I'm not going to keep running this. I'm going to do something else. No, I would not like to save my benchmark score. But I want to show you something interesting here. This is a command that basically... Someone explained it to me like it maxes out one core of the CPU per command and you can like duplicate them and keep stacking them. I don't know if that's actually what it does, full disclosure, no clue. But it's kind of cool if you want to like benchmark, well not benchmark, but if you want to test the thermals on a Mac, it'll just start taxing the CPU. So something interesting that I noticed when I did this the first time is this CPU is rated for 3.9 gigahertz max turbo boost and it went to 4. So that, that was interesting. So at times your CPU may go a little bit above the maximum rated turbo boost. And it will also maintain this 3.9 which is again the maximum rated turbo boost. It will maintain that. There it went to 4 a little bit. So the thermals are really quite impressive especially for current generation Apple. They haven't been putting the best thermal stuff into their products. I mean, they prioritize thinness and sleekness over over the uh, utility aspect, but I'm going to just keep doing that. That basically puts an incredible load on the CPU, worse than Cinebench. And I'll let it run for a short time. I can already hear the fan spinning up. It's been at 100 for a while. But this is about the worst load you can put on it, as far as I know. So uh, you'll see it start to try and handle that. I'm just going to let it run for a little bit so you can get an idea of what it's going to do under some intense workloads. This would be like rendering out a video in a really efficient app, maybe 3D rendering. It really does quite well. I would say this thermal enclosure can take full advantage of this CPU. The i7 can't. Um, you see the, uh, the temperature is dropping now below 100. 
starting to regulate itself. Um, I should have max fan control so you can see the speed, but I haven't installed that yet. It's probably maxing the fans and it's it's staying under 100. For some reason, I guess just because of the extra thermal headroom so you can get higher clock speeds, Apple likes to run their stuff to 100 degrees Celsius. If you own a PC, you know that's not normal. You don't do that on a PC. Things don't last. Um, I don't know if Apple knows what they're doing. I assume they do. If it breaks, I'm just going to get it replaced under warranty. And I'm not going to worry about it. Because that's how they made it. But yeah, you can see it's pretty much stable. It stays at its max turbo dipping down to 3.8 sometimes, but this is basically what it will run at. And, uh, just stop that. And also, this is all while recording on the machine, too. I don't have any GPU plugged into it either to help, so... This is just about worst case scenario. I just wanted to put this video out so you have an idea how the i5 does. It should get about 920, 930 in Cinebench. This run was a little bit low, but yeah, hope that helped.